One of the huge advantages of being a political analyst for a long time is that you don't have to rely on fake media for your background. You don't have to rely on the mood of the country concerning an individual yeah, to be able to do a background check on somebody who very suddenly becomes politically relevant. You can give people a true picture because you were there. You're not relying on anybody to tell you anything. Sadly, right now in Kenya, that is not something that is as valuable as it should be. Because Kenyans right now prefer their emotions. And very few people are willing to allow the facts to get in the way of what they're feeling. Period. And believe it or not, I don't blame them. Because I've been there myself. <laughs> oh yes, believe it or not. When we ended the almost 40 years reign of terror of a party called Kanu in December 2002, and we sent President Daniel Arap Moy packing, together with his preferred Kanu successor, at the time, our emotions ruled over us. We stopped thinking. And that is why, when we saw the same old faces of dictatorial Kanu cheering with us over the successful second liberation, which we thought would be the last liberation of Kenya, we didn't think twice. We didn't stop ourselves to ask ourselves, is this really going to be real change? With the same old faces? If only we had gotten as angry as we are now against the BBI, at least some of us, when names like Professor George Saitoti took critical roles in the new cabinet, if only we had raised our voices then, maybe things would have ended up different, but we were unable to. Why? Because our emotions of total and utter joy stopped us from thinking. Now I appreciate that today, in many people's books, the late Professor George Saitoti was a hero of Kenya. <laughs> you know, we didn't have as many banking options in those days as we do today. And I happened to be in a bank hall of a certain bank when I saw something that I should not have seen, a returned check, returned and paid, belonging to a man called Professor George Saitoti, who had then just been nominated to parliament. And my curiosity as a journalist led me to some numb, shocking information about the same person. The man's personal finances were in a mess. He drove a very old, smoking VW Beetle. <laughs> but barely a year later, after this first political appointment, he was one of the richest individuals in Kenya. And about 10 years later, when I launched the Kumekucha blog, evidence started flooding my desk of his involvement in corruption, crazy corruption. Potential investors into Kenya we in the middle of negotiations somewhere. And out of the blue, this man would arrive. Yeah, I'll not name him today. And he would always say he was representing the good professor. And his demand was always the same. This project can go nowhere. Until I collect what I've come to collect. So much money as a cut for the professor. And I watched with horror as the same professor was used to cover up when bad things happen to Kenyans. Yeah, his favorite phrase, which older Kenyans will remember, is that Kenyans don't jump to conclusions about this matter. The government will investigate. No stone will be left unturned <laughs> until we come to the truth, which we are going to reveal to you. No need to speculate. Now life is very interesting. Because one day something very bad happened to the good professor. 
as a result of which he left us in a very undignified manner with his heavy bulletproof vest which he never left behind intact it wasn't able to save him this time round yeah and somebody else repeated the professor's words no stone will be left unturned but as we speak his death is still mysterious it has been covered up like the many he covered up in his lifetime and that is why wise old men from the Swahili community have always told us malipo ni hapa hapa <laughs> very true very sad but extremely true now i know i bore you guys a lot when i repeat my political lecturer's favorite quote from julius caesar the play by william shakespeare the evil that men do lives after them the good is often tarred with their bones and of quote but in the case of kenyans it seems the opposite is true our history shows us very clearly the evil our politicians do is quickly forgotten and if not it is often tarred with their bones and then we invent fictional good that they did that they were supposed to do which lives long after them folks how are we ever going to change our country if we continue to behave like that how anyway a man called PLO Lumumba is a hero to most Kenyans but older Kenyans will remember very well what PLO Lumumba did and what he was during the worst dictatorial years of the late president Daniel Toretich of Moy he was a supporter of that regime he helped to prop up that regime and keep it going as Kenyans were maimed murdered silenced he defended the dictatorial regime in his flowery english with very long words which kenyans greatly admire that kizungu mingi that impresses kenyans so much that they forget and completely ignore to look for content and they focus on delivery yeah and of course it's possible to deliver nothing yeah using great english it is very possible to use a lot of vocabulary yeah and say absolutely nothing well there's a lot more to this character of a man the man who never wore jeans when he was a student at the nairobi university indeed the man who has been quoted as saying to date he does not own a single pair of jeans but alas Kenyans are not interested in anybody's past when that person comes out and speaks something that warms their hearts and massages their current emotions and that is precisely how the good professor got ahead during the moy days and got appointed to various prestigious and well paying government positions and positions which moy had power to appoint somebody to for instance he was once the dean of the school of law at kabarak university now according to my limited knowledge of human nature because i'm always a student always willing to learn more people never change and tactics that they've successfully used in the past to get ahead they will use again and again and again but kenyans are not interested in a man's past and that is why very few kenyans will be interested to investigate the short time under which PLO Lumumba was the director the boss at the Kenya anti corruption commission yeah he was there for less than a year and was dismissed under controversial circumstances let me just leave it at that you know in kenya it's very possible to build up your image in such a way that people quickly appoint you to a certain post believing you will make a difference believing that you'll take action 
and yet we know talk is cheap. Yeah, doing <laughs> is a whole different matter. And I also don't think Kenyans will be interested in a very interesting case that is in the public record. Where a man called Washira Maina sued PLO Lumumba for plagiarism. Ay, 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 ay. This was in 2017. Bwana Maina claimed that Lumumba wrote a 10,000 word essay titled From Jurisprudence to Polyprudence the Kenyan Presidential Election Petition, 2013. And he claimed that nearly 5,000 words from those 10,000 words were directly lifted from Mr. Oshira's article, which he wrote and published on April 20th, 2016. The article was published in the Law Society of Kenya Journal. Bwana Maina wanted compensation for intellectual theft. Now I've yet to establish how far this case went. Things just went quiet all of a sudden, which in Kenya usually means the matter has been settled out of court. But I doubt whether many Kenyans would be interested anyway. Folks, the character of a man, especially when that man wants to talk politics, and they want you to listen to them and their political views. I am also sure many Kenyans have forgotten that PLO Lumumba was in the team of lawyers for the president and Jubilee party that lost in the 2017 presidential polls petition against the election of President Uru Kenyatta. He was in that team of lawyers who lost a landmark case and the election was overturned. But then I guess Kenyans are not interested. Maybe we should just stick to the flowery English, admire it and enjoy it and enjoy the stretching, na presaps mingi, of the language of the Queen of England. After all, Life is short. Until next time, this is Chris Komekuja.